Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Yeah, it's a game coming out. Yeah? Soon. Okay. Three games, actually. There we go. What'd you see? What do you think? I saw two levels from the first game, which is just self-titled Spyro the Dragon. Okay. Did you get to see the cutscenes of them freeing the dragon? Oh, okay, here we go. I love that first Spyro. Do they recreate the entire weird like interview sections from the opening of Spyro? Because in the beginning, it was like they're filming a documentary. It was basically The Office with dragons. Yeah. Yeah. That's what inspired The Office. Uh-huh. <laughs> that whole series. Ricky Gervais is a huge Spyro fan. That's right. Purple dragon tattoo. The wings on his back. <laughs> That's why he's never shirtless. Uh-huh. But do they do that in the new one? Uh, I did not see that. I only saw two levels, Hanson. Okay. Yeah, so we got the intro. I was sitting there watching over his shoulder, and uh, it was um they di- they didn't like start the game up for us. They had a build for us where they took us to two specific levels. They had us okay. close our eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But you got to see like the opening hub area, like the the green area where you're running around, torching sheep, like, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. We saw two kind of simplistic levels. Uh, Toasty is one of them, which is uh the name of one of the villains you go against. Yeah. Uh, and then what was the other one? Green Hill Zone? No, that's Sonic. No, I don't remember. Rolling Hills. So, well, I can't remember the name, but it it's wasn't one, one of, those, of the flying ones. It it's from the, the Artisan no. World. There we Both go. levels are from the Artisan World. That's the easiest way to describe it. Yeah. Uh, but beautiful. Like, so we all just played, or at least saw videos of Crash Bandicoot, right? The the remastered games there, and those still held a lot of that same kind of essence in the graphics as. Uh, Naughty Dog's games on PlayStation 1. Yeah. And I think that's testament to Naughty Dog's uh, ability to really add in a lot of detail even back then. And also the game being more linear, right? You're mostly running on a path forward or toward the screen, right? So they could pack in more detail. Spyro, they went more open environments and that meant a lot less detail. So you would see things like a field of grass would just be a plain surface maybe not even textured but when you cover it with those gems baby now we're rolling <laughs> yeah it's a good time uh so now you know when you think about that there's when you go to like a ps4 or xbox one and you're pushing that machine to the limit and in terms of detail you could put in the environments they look completely different so it is it does seem like more of an upgrade visually uh than the 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 crash bandicoot trilogy yeah, okay. And I feel like the gameplay, like I love Crash. Crash was my first love. Spyro came along later and I I love that first game a lot. I feel like the gameplay for Spyro is going to hold up a lot better than Crash's if it controls well. Yeah, now you could use analog sticks. Okay. It's quite the innovation. That's right. It's wild for the first Spyro at least. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you remember you could you would turn with the shoulder buttons. Right? Is that what it uh, was? The camera controls, right? Yeah, you yeah, rotate like the camera. Yeah. It was it was confusing. Uh, but yeah, so now you have you know, the modern sensibilities of controls that you would expect in, in Spyro. Um, but yeah, it is the same type of gameplay. You know, they didn't want to change too much. They wanted it to feel like a familiar, you know, an old glove you are, right? But at the same time, when you look at it, it is, even the enemies are different. So they have new animations. So you'll see like a sleeping dog and you'll go kind of sneak up on it and it'll kind of raise up its ear, kind of start sniffing around, go back to sleep. Uh, but when it moves, it is the exact same movements as before. So it will, you know, the, the attack speed, your approach to them are all the same. But there's, they're just so much more alive now. Did you get to see, this, the tiny specifics is what I want to know. Did you get to see the level with like an egg stealer in it? Yes. They're like, bah, 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 bah. Yeah. Did they make like that same sound? Uh, I think we were talking when we saw it. Oh, I think I was God. yelling at the screen because I hated them and it brought back terrible memories they're of chasing them. such a- Yeah, I was... Was I yelling? I don't remember. You were very mad. I yeah, think you were, said you but, were crying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we did get to see one. They look very cool now. Uh, like <laughs> badass. Well, before they looked like I don't know. It's like a Jawa. Yeah, yeah. kind of like. And it, I don't even remember if they had animation or if they were just like kind of just sliding along the ground. <laughs> Anything works. There's a little bit more of a bounce in their step. One thing that's changing with Spyro in in, in terms of movement is they've put a little bit more playful bounce in his gait. So, thank God. You know, he used to be just tearing across the terrain. Uh-huh. Uh, now it looks like he's more. It's more of kind of a a gallop, uh, but it still looks good. Good, yeah. yeah and I think, you still put your head down and go, you know, fast. And yeah, that, that looks yeah. great. I think this is one of good. Secretly going to be maybe not secretly, but it's going to be one of the best selling games of the year. I think there's a lot more nostalgia Probably. for Spyro than people really know, or maybe it just it was seen as a kitty thing. Maybe even amongst journalists and stuff. There's a lot of skeptics out there in other gaming podcasts. Yeah. Not to point fingers, but those games were awesome. And Sonic did such a good job with those original games. Well, you got to point a finger. What direction is this studio? 
what direction? Yeah, of these people that are uh, saying oh, bad that, things. That are viral. naysayers. On oh, North, North, interesting. West. Everything's west. East. Everything <laughs> that's wrong about the world is to the west. I've okay. said it a thousand right. times. You're so, off the hook, Dan Riker. Yeah. Uh, one interesting thing they're doing is uh, what, what are they, they're just called the dragons, right? Like yeah. the, the yeah. dragons that you're freeing. Ev- like they were pretty consistent. Elder dragons? Elder dragons out there? Do you remember? I don't know if they call them elder dragons. Okay. Maybe they well, do. They were pretty consistent in the original game as far as like their design. Like, I disagree. Maybe a little bit. No. no? It varied quite a bit. Dragon okay. Dragon. Well, they're digging. If that's the case, they're digging even deeper into that and like they're redesigning those dragons in a big in a big way thank big you subs- for releasing me is that what that's they all, okay. okay clearly the sound did not stick in my brain the way it did for you but uh the uh th- like they're every single one is singularly designed and has specific things about them like one's like a painter so he has like a painting smock and, oh, holding cool. paint. and then another one uh, do you remember there was one that was a uh, like a barista that they showed yeah, us so yeah like coffee. oh that looks what? like a yeah that anything looks- kind of tied to the artisan theme so they really went for it like tons of them like painters sculptors all that kind of stuff so each dragon the hipsters at coffee shops like they and they really all look very different that we, sounds fun we didn't get to see them all in the game but they showed us a lot of concept art yeah he uh, didn't stop with the concept <laughs> art <laughs> it's, it was cool though like I, it yeah it was interesting to them talk about like like uh like an original level like maybe the only thing in the in the terrain was like this one rock you know what i mean that like was they there. thought it was a rock they didn't know because it was yeah. such a plain shaded thing but here but so <laughs> what they're doing now is like everything that they've like added detail to it doesn't really affect the gameplay like you can see there's a there's a real like little singular blades of grass but it doesn't really change how spyro walks through the environment but like if there was that one rock in the original game that spyro had to jump over like that is that is still there and now it's like uh, overly designed where it has like you know it, it, it looks so much better but they've, okay. they've maintained the sort of geography of the level there'll be times where it'll be like we think this is a village there's two huts here they were going for like <laughs> a village yeah yeah you know, they would talk to Insomniac too. Like, were you going for this? And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We really wanted to blow this out, but we couldn't. We were, you had restraints. Yes, one. Uh, yeah. Or constraints with the technology. So they, uh, you know, they, they, they were able to, Toys for Bob was able to do whatever they wanted with it and so those, really, really make cool. it, try to be that true vision. So those huts look great now, but they're Good still, huts. they're still like the exact same location and size that they were. They just okay. have way more detail. On and them. the background might have more detail. And stuff yeah. Too. I mean, yeah. just the, the videos and images they've released so far, it looks amazing. But do you have any sense of if they're tweaking the script at all? Uh, yeah, I think that, uh, well, they have. Spyro's been recast. Yeah. It's a okay. new, new. Sort of. Well, it's the same actor from two and three. It's Tom Kenny, oh, interesting. right? Yeah, SpongeBob, yeah. SquarePants. Because the thing was yeah. that with the first one, Insomniac, in retrospect, did not like the tone of Spyro because he kind of was like a little dick. He's like, "Where's Nasty Norg?" and all this crap. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm it's interested to see like how much Tom Kenny kind of softens that performance, or if they're going to yeah. tweak those lines even further to make it less grating. But it has been all re-recorded, rewritten, right, of course. I'm not sure. But I want to say the dragons do have some new stuff, but I'm not 100 okay. percent certain. Come when is back. this coming out? I don't remember. September? Okay. October? Oh, it looks November. So I'm not a Spyro nostalgic person. I don't really have any nostalgia for Spyro, but I, I'm I will more interested in I think it will like you, I think it'll hold up better than like Crash. Like yeah. I'm interested to play these sort of uh, all kind of from a new perspective too, yeah. a little bit, you know. One thing they're still trying to figure out is because the grass is so much more detailed now, the gems that you were talking about before yeah. were all on the ground. So now, you know, like they were completely visible. You, If there was a gym there, there was nothing obstructing it. Yeah. Uh, now the grass will be flowing next to it. So they're less visible. So they're like, would it be bad for us to lift them off the ground and have all the gems floating Sacrilege. now? Sacrilege. But Cancel at the same my time, pre-order. <laughs> at the same time, the graphics make it a little more challenging because one of the 100% things in the game is getting all the gems in a level. Yeah. Uh, but now they're a little harder to see, at least at the in the uh, the demo we yeah. saw. They're Good. still de- debating if they're going to raise them up. But or if they, maybe they'll make them glow more yeah. or something. God, like being that, a game developer know? sounds so tough. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a clip from a larger show called The Game Informer Show. You can find it on iTunes, Google Play, or GameInformer.com. We take the fun opportunities and exclusive information from Game Informer Magazine and boil it into a show that airs every Thursday with exclusive cover story information, developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So come love games with us.